It might be funny to think that 17% of British people don't believe the moon landings happened. But it's much less funny when we realise that 33% of British people believe in a conspiracy theory about Muslim no-go zones. Telling you all about France's no-go zones, hundreds of Muslim-controlled areas around Paris that outsiders and cops don't dare to explore. They chose just to give it up. And 19% of British people believe that Jewish people have an unhealthy control over the world's banking systems. Conspiracy theories can act like rabbit holes, with people getting sucked in and becoming increasingly radicalised. Someone might start watching videos about the JFK assassination or the moon landings and with time increasingly get radicalised to the point where they end up watching things about whether or not the Holocaust happened. And I've got the same kind of feeling about the Holocaust. Conspiracy theories can also be a route into the far right, especially for young people who might start watching this sort of content online and then get sucked into more hateful and more extreme ideologies. But conspiracy theories aren't just an issue online. Here in the UK, we've been monitoring a group that meets in the real world. Once a month, here in London, a conspiracy group called Keep Talking meets. It brings together some of the most notorious and toxic conspiracy theorists in the whole of the UK. People who don't believe in climate change. Welcome to Windows on the World. I'm here with Piers Corbyn. They know the truth. Pro-Assad conspiracy theorists. The white helmets running cross-border organ trafficking. 9-11 truthers and anti-Semites and Holocaust deniers. There's even people who come who believe that the murder of the MP Joe Cox was an inside job. Keep Talking was created by someone called Ian Phantom and is co-organised by the notorious Holocaust denier Nicholas Collistrum, who once argued that gas chambers were only used for disinfectant purposes. This group's been meeting for years, but for the last three years we've got inside and we've heard a whole host of strange and dangerous conspiracy theories. The archives from the listening posts show no evidence that they heard anything about deaths in Auschwitz. We didn't know that this was going on because it wasn't. These, these camps were work camps. They were, work camps. They, were, they were there to help in the war effort. If they wanted to kill the Jews, they wouldn't have put them in a, taken them all the way across Europe and put them in a camp and paid for their food and everything. These meetings regularly attract very extreme figures. People like James Thring, the notorious anti-Semite. Alison Shablow, the Holocaust denier who's recently been convicted for grossly offensive anti-Semitism. And the now infamous Skillard Atzman. One of the key points, though, about Keep Talking, it doesn't just attract people from the far right, it can also attract people from the far left, united around their anti-Semitism. At certain events over the last three years, we've seen far right figures like Michelle Renouf. The issue for me is not whether the ho Hollywood version of the Holocaust is accurate or not accurate. And the notorious fascist Stead Stedman in attendance. But there's also been people like Peter Gregson, who was suspended from the Labour Party for anti Semitism and for saying the Holocaust was exaggerated. It also brings together a whole host of other characters from across the political spectrum. Piers Corbyn, the climate change denier and conspiracy theorist, the journalist Vanessa Beely, who's written conspiracies about the White Helmets, and the YouTube conspiracy theorist Mark Windows, have all been in attendance over the last few years. The media campaign around the death of Labour MP Joe Cox has been a PR assault on the minds of the public. We've released a report on Keep Talking that outlines everything we found by getting inside the organisation. We're going to expose their racism. We're going to shed a light onto their often dangerous conspiracy theories. And we're going to show how elements of the far left have been collaborating with the anti-Semitic far right. They wanted their hate to stay in the shadows, but I hope not hate, we're not going to let that happen.